Okay, so my name is Steve Aiken. I'm the founder of Intelligent Plant. We're at Codeless. Um, I was just chatting to Charlene, and uh, it's great to get all the comments in on LinkedIn. We, we were all looking at them last night. I think um, it's great to see people saying that they're, they're learning stuff and, and, uh, and making use of the data base we've got here. Um, it is quite an unusual situation we've got with people getting access to some technologies that's probably never seen used together in unison before. Um, and and I thought about this and thought, I wonder what, if people are thinking, why are Intelligent Plant involved in this? What, what are we wanting to get from this and why are, why are we involved in it? And, and this is the statement I put down in terms of in terms of what we're thinking. So we're, we're looking to accelerate the deployment and the adoption of key industrial data analytics for every industry on the planet. That's why we're involved in this, because we want to help people get that done. And we're doing that by using the industrial app store um, connecting that up to many clients data, making it available through Power BI and Power Automate for anyone to be able to make use of it and to be able to make use of it in, as a commercial entity in order to solve problems for many people. So what you've been doing up to now, um, you've been using App Store Connect, which is connected to the category Catapult data set, the OGA data set and to Ithaca Zone data. It's, it's key to say this is a live connection. So this is not um, a spreadsheet that's been exported that you're looking at. You're looking at live data that changes as the equipment changes. And that's a really key thing to remember. Often when people are doing uh, research and development, they'll start off with a data set that doesn't change, that is a historical one. And in doing so, they design something that only works in the historical context. By doing this with live data, we're building something that could work for anyone at any time. And that means that they could use it in their day-to-day -day operations to get stuff done. So it's really key that we're using this live connection. If we don't use the live connection, effectively, it's like a spreadsheet and it's just something that someone's built that shows some historical data in one story. We want to tell the stories of the future. We want to be able to see what's happening tomorrow when it happens. And that's what this is making possible. So one of the things I think about is how do we make the scale how do we do something and make it so that we can use it many times for many clients? And in doing that, um, we, we came upon a realization. If we solve one problem for many people, many clients, many industries, one problem, then we can scale that very easily. But if we solve many problems for one person, one client, one industry, then, it, then it's limited how that can scale. So Think about the, the core of a problem. Try and solve that really well, and then you'll make something that can be applied again and again and again. And doing that with the technologies you're using means that you can actually apply it on worry catapult data, on OGA data, on Ithaca data, or on data from any other operator or any other industry. And I think that's a key thing to be thinking here. It's about how, how we change the, the current situation, which is where people are building tons of spreadsheets. I was trying to make a picture with tons of spreadsheets that were all different, but imagine they were all different on the right. Um, that are all doing different things that one guy knows, and this is many problems solved for one person. And changing that to let's solve one problem for many people and do it again and again and again. That way we can make stuff that's cost effective. That means that everyone wins and gives everybody a live view of what's happening. And we can do that once and apply it across the world. Now, once we've done that, if you're thinking about what, what we're up to today, we're making a client specific app. We're building something that solves a specific problem for a client, whether it's ORE Catapult, whether it's the OGA, or whether it was Ithaca data you were using. And if you take that concept and you generalize it, you can build a general app, something that solves a problem, but isn't totally related to the specifics of that client. So if it's about shutdowns of turbine data, then it's something that does the analysis of turbine shutdowns for any wind turbine. If it's the OGA data, then it's something that helps people understand how to get more production from wells on any field. And the Ithaca data, well, then it would be something that is able to help any company, be it oil and gas or otherwise, understand their current CO2 production and in doing so be able to decrease it. Now, once you've made a general app, you would then need to configure it. You would bring it along to your new client and say, here we go, we're going to tie this up to your data. And that's how you would get a client specific implementation. The next stage, the next stage is something we've only done a few times as an intelligent plan, is where you actually take that app 
and try to give it intelligence. In that space, the app can go and find what it needs, go and find the data it needs to go and give the client what they need. Um, in that space, that's true scale. That's something you can switch on for many people in a second. And that's what we're used to on our phones when you download an app. You switch it on and it tells you something straight away. It doesn't ask you a ton of questions. So if we're going to be doing this, where are the problems? Where are the opportunities? Where are the things we can look for, the things we can solve? Now, this one um, sprung to mind with me because I, I was speaking to a, a senior manager in Microsoft about what we did. And he said, hey, are you aware of this? And this is uh, the, the subsea data center that Microsoft made that's off the coast of Scotland. I think they just pulled it up. So there's a picture of this covered in barnacles now. Um, it, it was a successful trial. They showed that this was a, a very efficient way to, uh, to run a data center because you had less cooling. Um, now, if you look at that, he was saying, hey, wait a minute, we could use that stuff you've got on our data center to monitor that, to understand what's going on, to understand if there's water getting in, to understand what the temperature is, to understand how to better run that subsea data center. And that's something we're still trying to find the right person to speak to within Microsoft in order to move forward. Chemical manufacturing, and when I say chemicals, think about um, deodorants, think about washing up liquid, all of these things that we buy, they're sometimes actually made from oil and gas. Um, and, and those plants that make the chemicals, they need advice. They need to know how they're doing it. They need to know where the waste is generated and they need to improve. By building these specific apps that solve a specific problem, whether it's how to get the best batch of chemicals, then we can actually help solve that in many industries, reduce waste and then reduce the impact on the environment if there is any. Power gen. So if you look at power generation, there are so many problems right now that, that are dying for a solution. And this is like feeling like, you know, people have just invented boats and you're trying to go find other continents. I often looked back as a kid and thought, man, everyone's discovered everything already. What's there left to do? Well, there's tons left to do here. If you look at the way that power is done, balancing the grid and understanding demand and supply and being able to motivate it is something that's really a big challenge and something that could be solved really well by this sort of technology. In doing that, I imagine every person that's at this hackathon on a laptop, and if you were able to tell every laptop to stop taking power from the mains and start running on battery, you've instantly removed the amount of demand from the, from the um, grid, and you could instantly turn it back on. In doing so, helping to, helping to balance the grid. Imagine that when you've got a windy day, your, your laptop starts to, um, starts to charge up. And when you've got a less windy day, your laptop discharges slightly. And we can use all the batteries everywhere to do these sorts of things. But we need the technologies to be able to get the data from all these different places and pull it together. And that's what we're doing with the App Store Connect and the, and the App Store in terms of connect to them all and allow them to share the data with the app provider. So you could build the app first and then bring the people in one by one who would eventually be making more money because they'd be doing the right thing at the right time. Water supply. Um, it, I think when you look at water supply, there's many leaks that they don't know where they are. Analyzing the data can help find them and help them fix them so that there's less water going into the ground where it shouldn't be and less waste happening in terms of chemicals that are treating it. Transport is the one that everyone loves to talk about in terms of the transition from oil and gas to other means of uh, power for transport. But um, analyzing that and, and helping people understand how to reduce their impact, whether it's the ride sharing um, or, or any other means, is something that's a data set that can definitely be looked at. But eventually we get to people's homes. You know, everyone's sat at home and we're all using energy. We all have to pay for it. And um, wouldn't we all love to be able to say to someone, hey, if, you're, if you save me an amount of on my bill, then actually I'll give you some of it. So when you put it all together, you can actually start motivating all these different parties, the person in the home, the car, the industry that's making the chemicals that the person is using. And you can start to link all of these things in such a way that the whole world is in a better place. My name is Steve Aiken, and I'm the founder of Intelligent Plant. That's my email address and my LinkedIn. You can give us a shout on the um, Teams channels if there's any questions. So this was me and Neil um, last year. We were lucky enough to, to have Scottish Enterprise help us fund a trip to Atlanta, the, the Business Application Summit at Microsoft. And that was us holding the remains of our stand above the Microsoft banner just before we left. So questions on Teams, and thanks very much for your time.